now for our segment in introducing uh, Mr. Tamer Farawan. He's a composer and uh, he studied uh, originally mechanical engineering, but then he went into music and uh, studied at uh, the Royal Music Academy in London and worked as an editor in uh, the British Radio in 1994. Then a documentary film director in uh, a private uh, satellite network. Then after that, he started composing for films and that was in 1998 by scoring the music uh, for uh, the Yusri Nasrallah film El Medina, the city. Since then, he scored for numerous uh, films and uh, television series, including Bab El Shams. And uh, we have in the background uh, part of his composition, uh, one of his soundtracks being uh, played as well. Uh, also, he made the music for Cabaret and Signin Nessa, women's uh, prison. And right now, we uh, also, in addition to uh, participating in many film festivals and right now we'd like to interview him. Welcome with us and good afternoon Mr. Tamer. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Tamer, thank you very much for being with us today on my cruise. If we start by uh, the selection of your works, how, what work that or what series that you participate in? Is it more about the directors or the scenarios, the writers? How do you pick them? I think it's a combination of both. I think it's um it's uh, through a long relationship with, with certain directors that I work with, I, um, um, I get, you know, films and television series uh, that um, people who would like to work with me in it naturally. And uh, because of the long relationship and the um, rapport we have together, I think the subject matters almost also are, are quite appealing to me. Well, uh, last Ramadan, uh, you did the soundtrack and the music for Sava uh, Tarwah, Seven Lives. Would you tell us the story, uh, like how did you get assigned uh, that composition and how did you choose the mood of the music? Uh, I worked with the director, Tarek Refat. He's, uh, he's an old friend of mine since university and this is his debut um, uh, directing um, uh, a television series in Ramadan, and uh, we discussed a lot the, the the mood of the of the of the um, of the score in the in 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 the series, and um, uh, there's a lot of characters in the in the series. There's the main character who is uh, played by Khaled Nabawi, and uh, uh, the other main characters are uh, Iyad Nassar, who's playing uh, the villain in the. Um, in the in the in the TV series and also Rania Yusuf. So there's a lot of characters, a lot of main characters. So we we developed like thematic um, aspects to these characters musically. So there's Aisa's theme, who is Yad Nasser. There's uh, Muataz's theme, that uh, who is Khaled and 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 this this lends itself to the um, to the 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 struggle between um, uh, good and evil. Uh, embodied in the music itself uh, where it clashes together and uh, that's the way we've, we've done it also we uh, we decided on recording with a full orchestra and uh, I had to uh, record in uh, in Budapest Hungary um, uh, to have the, the, the big sound the, the the full sound of the orchestra which is not easily done here in Egypt do you usually read the script for uh, the uh, all of the characters or is it just a casual discussion between you and the director about the main characters, two or three? No, um, um, in, in film I read the script and I watch the film carefully uh, a lot of times and I work on the film in sync, I mean with the, with the, with the, with the, with the film in the cutting and the staging and the acting itself. In television series it's a different ball game altogether because it's um, um, usually it's not finished when I'm doing music so I um, I read parts of the script, um, uh, main episodes that are really important to the flow of the drama itself in the, in the television series, and also at the same time I watch a lot of main main scenes that that contribute to the um, to the to the conflicts and the dramatic flow of the of the of the whole season itself. So, so, I, I yeah. read that uh, when you do your soundtracks and when you do the music, you prefer to go abroad. Is that true and why? No, it's not a matter of pre preference. It's a matter of which, uh, if I need a full orchestra, I cannot do it in Egypt. We have a very good performance orchestra, the Cairo Symphony Orchestra, the Cairo Opera Orchestra, uh, Alexandria uh, the Opera Orchestra and all that. Uh, 
they're, they're good performance orchestras, but they're not, they're not specialized in film recording. Mm -hmm. The people are, who are specialized in film recording in Egypt are very few. You cannot get a full orchestra to, to, uh, to, Does to record. Does that make a difference? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a different uh, aspect altogether because when you record, there are certain disciplines in recording. Uh -huh. I mean, people have to be very quiet. Uh, in a performance, they don't have to. They can. They can even stump their legs <laughs> counting the the bars. But in in a record, they do that. So yeah. it's a special kind of of musician. Uh -huh. And they you cannot direct them to do that. Like you cannot direct the the, the Egyptian ones to tell them do no, not do that. No, it's do a, that. it's a second nature thing. It's a, it's a matter of uh, of course. If we if we develop a, a recording orchestra, that will happen. But mm -hmm. these are performance uh, musicians. They're, They're not, not recording musicians. They're not mm -hmm. used to that. So if I bring them now, it needs a lot of training. It needs a lot of discipline. It needs a, it needs a, an institutionalization mm -hmm. itself. Uh, there has to be a, a, a governing body. That, uh, and that's available abroad. I mean, mm -hmm. when I go there, there's a studio that is specialized for recording an orchestra mm -hmm. for film mm -hmm. and not for classical music. Yes. Because mm -hmm. it's a different also, um, it's a, a different sound. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, classical music has a has a uh, certain sound. Uh, film music has a different sound, although it's derived from class classical music. But the, the type of recording, the way they play, the, um, also um, the conductors themselves are used to recording uh, film because they listen to click mm -hmm. click tracks, or they have you know on the screen they have markers and. It's it's a different uh, <laughs> it's, a it's, different a, it's a different thing. game completely. Yes. So is it harder for you to be working on series or films? Because in films you start working following the production of the movie. Is it right? Uh, yeah, in in film it's better in composition. Uh -huh. um, uh, it's easier to, to get ideas very quickly because you have uh, two hours of film maximum or three hours or one and a half hour. But on, in a television series, you have to produce themes that can be repeated, can can be repeated, and at the same time not to be, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, redundant. Mm -hmm. You know that uh, you're, you're listening to all the time. Ah, it's the same theme. Uh, wow. So you have to have a variety. The theme has to be uh, has to have a lot of variations in order to so that mm -hmm. it, it can so each it character can last has, for thirty has episodes. to have a theme and derive some yeah, yeah, yeah. sub-themes, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, the, no, the film uh, has to have maximum four themes, uh -huh. uh, four to five. The uh, television series, series, I compose actually up, up to about ten themes, wow. uh -huh. so that we can have of, uh, of thematic, you know, influences in the, in the, in the in 30 episodes. Yeah. Yes. So, which was your favorite theme so far? My favorite theme? Oh my God! Yes. I composed 50, uh, 50 movies and twenty. Uh, but you have to have a favorite I'm not gonna remember the theme. <laughs> no, actually, I like. I mean, uh, 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 Shams or uh, uh, the Gate of the Sun is one of my favorite. Uh, you know, the theme in the film itself. It represents um, uh, Palestine. There's a, a certain theme that represents Palestine in the film. So it's. It's really, it's really a good theme. Uh, I mean, <laughs> does it have a name? Um, going back. Going back. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I'd like to ask about the musical instruments. Now, uh, for uh, for the musical instrument, is there a certain musical instrument that will be the leading instrument in a certain soundtrack? And would it be like the? I, I always feel that the violin. Uh, is a leading uh, instrument, but I don't know, is it always the leading instrument or not uh, necessarily? Okay, that's a very good question. I mean, uh, violins in plural, I mean, violins, I yeah. mean, string section is the leading section in the orchestra. It's the biggest section in the orchestra. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's the biggest numbers. So you have, if you have a, a typical symphony orchestra, it's 34 string instruments. Mm -hmm. So it's, you have 18 violins, you have six violas, six celli, and four ba uh, contrabasses. Mm -hmm. So in total it's 34. That's a normal symphony orchestra. Mm -hmm. And that comprises about um, 60%, 60 to 65 percent of the orchestra. The rest mm -hmm. is the brass, the woodwinds, the percussion. Mm -hmm. So it, mm -hmm. it is a really important element of classical music mm -hmm. yes. and film music because it's, it's, it's the, the, this section combined together 
covers all ranges of emotions, all ranges of articulation. It is very easily uh, played, not easily uh, for the musicians, of course, mm -hmm. not for the laymen, but uh, it, it expresses very um, abundantly uh, because it's, it's, uh, sometimes the woodwinds cannot really express that much because uh, because of the limitation of of, of uh, the sound uh, breathing yeah. they have to breathe in between but uh, in violence they don't have to breathe it's mm. a continuous sound mm. so uh, it's just bowing so when we go like this and this that's it's continuous mm. and it flows uh, woodwinds are support sometimes and when they come in they play certain you know um, tunes and then they go back and the brass, the brass is the power of the of the of the symphony orchestra, and of course the percussion uh, is the is the percussion. <laughs> it's like the beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, before we continue our interview with you, we'd like first to uh, see excerpts from your work. So now uh, we have a short uh, short reel of uh, your work. Okay. <laughs> صدرا في الهوى ومحى قلب تبرز باللذات وهو فتى كبر من لبسته الريح فانفتحى question was about uh, Lily Karim. Uh -huh. You have worked with her for about two or three times? Three times. Se yeah. Three times. So, is it different every time or is it just you like the actress, you like the cast, you like the director, so it's more of a family, not work. 
Uh, more or less, I mean, um, we, uh, we worked on that uh, the first time, the first time in, in, in television. I worked with Lily before in uh, in, a, in a film uh, called uh, uh, I can't remember the name. It was a, a long time ago. Uh -huh. uh, but this is the first time in television. Um, uh, it was Kamla Bozikri. Uh, also, was the first time, and we it just we just clicked all of us. I mean, we had a wonderful time. We did, uh, you know, the music uh, was uh, for them was great, and we enjoyed it. And uh, and then we we embarked on the second project, which was uh, Women's Prison, and uh, that was a b big hit. And then uh, I continued to work with Nelly Karim, but with another director, who is Tamer Mohsen, uh, also a friend of mine, a long time ago. But was that the hardest? Because that was. Uh in the 1960s and the 1970s as a character living in the 1960s and 70s and then growing up yeah was it harder for you to that, be composing yes a theme for her actually it was that was a, a very um, complicated um, uh, endeavor because it was um, it was it was not only about this character it was about uh, this character and uh, the, the reflection of egypt yes. itself in this character so okay. i had to really it's not about a, um, um, uh, about a girl who grows up in the 60s and, and then evolves and then changes and then all that. No, it's also uh, a parallel um, um, uh, kind of um, uh, theme that's going on, which is the country itself. Yes. How is it? Uh, How it evolved in about 40 or 30 years as well. Yeah, yeah yes. absolutely. So, so this is this was the pa in the music. I had to really make sure that this is there. So it was harder than absolutely. the other series. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh -huh. Well, uh, Mr. Taylor, uh, when you do the, the soundtrack of, of a film or a TV series, in addition to uh, the character, of course, that's written on the paper, do you take in consideration the build-up and the feature, facial expression and facial features of the actors and, or actresses? Like, if, if it's the same written uh, character on paper, would you uh, do the music different if it was, let's say, Nelly Karim doing it or uh, someone else? Uh, I think subconsciously you have to do that. I mean, it has to happen like that because um, when I'm composing for a film or even for television and I'm seeing the scene on the screen while I'm working, um, it's the energy of the of the of the of the of the film or the TV show that that really affects me. Energy in terms of how the actors are acting, how uh, their movements, the the editing, the camera movements, the the lighting, all of that really uh, the tone of their voices, all of that affects how I compose. So it's it's all it's it's the comprehensive energy that comes out of the film that really affects me as a composer in order to, um, you know, make the, the music for the film or TV show. But you have composed a number of songs as well, not just about film and television. What about that experience? Um, it's, it's within television and film as well. I mean, most of the songs I did uh, were for television and film. I mean, uh, I think we listened a while ago to um, uh, the song from Debbie Shams. Um, yes. Also, it was, it was meant to be a score for a, for a certain scene in the in the in the in the film. Yes. And it turned out to be a big hit after that. And um, I did a couple of songs for uh, for some television shows, and uh, that's about it. Have you considered composing for singers like for co live concerts? Uh, composing for live concerts, uh, maybe. Doing live concerts of my of my work, yeah, I've but considered not that. for singers like like Amr Diab or other. And uh, no, I, I think it's um it's a matter of um, specialization. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I find myself more uh, towards pure music. I mean, um, song if it's I do you know compose songs if it's part of the collective effort of doing music as well. So. Most of the time, my songs are really music that has um, a, a, a voice uh, and some like lyrics. Omar I beg your pardon? Like Omar Khayrat. Um, more or less, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a music style. composer. He's mm -hmm. not. Um, I mean, he's not composing songs. He composes yes. music. Exactly. So when he composes songs, he does the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So who inspires you? Who do you listen to usually? 
I listen to a lot of jazz. Mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of classical music. I listen to a lot of rock. Mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of old Egyptian music, um, uh, which is very inspiring. I mean, especially the 30s, 40s, and 50s, mm -hmm. and 60s, uh, maybe part mm -hmm. of the 70s. Um, and um, uh, I try to expand a lot of, you know, uh, uh, sometimes I listen to um, some Iranian music, some, uh, you know, Turkish, some, uh, although I don't like them very much, the Turks, uh, <laughs> in their music. I mean, yeah. Yeah. nice people, but uh, no. the music is, is, for me, the Turkish music is what influenced Egyptian music to become very stagnant a lot of the time. I mean, very melodic rather than harmonic. Uh, very a lot of ornaments, a lot of. Uh, so this is um, uh, this is a preference for me that yes. I don't like a lot of ornaments. Yeah. So maybe Turkish music is a bit too much for me. But yeah. um, that, that's that uh, that's my inspiration. I mean, I listen to all kinds of music. Uh, now, uh, I heard or. All my colleagues are telling me, oh, the film industry is na down right now, the TV series are not, the production is not as what it used to be. So that certainly would affect you as a composer, wouldn't it? What, what's the real story? Is that true? Is the work as not as good as before? No, I mean, it's a matter of, uh, it's um, actually, uh, the film and television industry have, in terms, technically and production-wise, have, have evolved uh, positively. It's the... Uh, um, it's the distribution and uh, and the way it, w it works in order to generate money after that. That's the problem, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, and that has always been the problem since the 70s up till now. Mm -hmm. And it's always ups and downs, you know, de depending on uh, the economic situation, the political situation in the country. It, it's all about that. So, I mean, um, now we're, we're in, uh, you know, uh, we're coming out of two revolutions, uh, five years of turbulence and all that. So more or less this is very good that we're having uh, still an industry going on <laughs> well thank you very much composer Kamal Karan for this interview and I wish you all the best and thank I wish you to hear much. more of your works thank you well and now let's enjoy together uh, the song Tahiyah uh, Masr Long Live Egypt which was uh, first sang as part of the inauguration ceremony of uh, the Suez Canal and we'll be back